Have you ever wondered why some people look really chic and cool when they dress in quirky styles, whereas other people look like they're just trying way too hard? In this video, I'm going to show you how you combine the sun style route with your body type. My name is Ellie Jean, I'm a personal stylist and on this channel, we use body types to elevate our personal style and end the war with our wardrobes. So what are style roots? Style roots is my personal theory of where each of us have influences from nature which guide our style. So rather than trying to, you know, latch onto a cottagecore aesthetic or the coquette aesthetic or dark academia aesthetic, which are very temporary things and using these kind of aesthetics to define our style, which is not really like a long-term solution, you find your roots and I have established that there are eight of them. So for example, the moon style route, which isn't the one we're focusing on today, but the moon style route is a combination of edgy, gothic, rebellious, punk, alternative kind of styles. And moon is the underlying root of all of these things. And you can see that actually a lot of these different aesthetics or styles have this connection. So the eight style routes are mountain, mushroom, sun, moon, earth, stone, fire, and flower. And today we're focusing on sun, which is a really bright, bold, fun, playful, quirky style route. So if you've ever said, oh, I want to have a touch of fun in my looks, this is what we're talking about. So let's look at sun in more depth. Some aesthetics that I think that go under sun include 1960s, art ho, Y2K, street style for sure, futuristic, rave, psychedelic, and hipster. And each of these are combined with different style routes, but sun is involved in all of them. And if you want to apply sun to your outfits, these are some details that you should be looking for. Patterns, high contrast, unexpected details, polka dots, stripes, layering, metallic fabrics, animal print, pops of color, iridescence, collars, interesting or quirky elements, and oversized or undersized details. The body type which most closely aligns with the sun style route is gamin, but it's not just gamines which can dress playful and quirky and have fun with the outfits. There are 10 body types kind of devised by a man called David Kibbe. Um, you can watch this video on it that I made to kind of refresh yourself on that. In this video, we're gonna be using my refine, focus and follow method and kind of be going into that in a bit more depth for each person that we look at in this video. This is basically the three ways that you can combine your style roots with your body type. So you're trying to find a piece of clothing that is both fun, playful, and basically sun, and also works for your body type. There are three ways you're gonna go about it. So the first one is refine. This is when you adjust each detail so that it fits your body type recommendations. So say you were a dramatic and you were looking for a floral print, rather than going for one that's little and rounded, you'd choose one that was elongated and sharp like a daisy. Method number two is focus. This is where you have a piece which has that little and rounded floral print, but the silhouette of the dress that you're buying works to your dramatic body type. And method number three is follow. This is when you don't try and get a floral print because you know it doesn't work for your body type and instead you just opt for a gingham print. So let's pick one Kibbe verified celebrity from each of the 10 body types and see how they combine their sun route with their body type. So number one, dramatics. We're looking at Kristen Wiig. Dramatic dominant feature is vertical, which means that they are elongated and narrow, and that's what we're looking for in our details. So, refine. You can see that this bag she has, rather than choosing a rounded little clutch, she's chosen an elongated rectangular clutch with a sharp geometric pattern. Focus, so we want to keep the silhouette of a dramatic, but the pattern we can play with a little bit more. So Kristen Wiig wears this lovely dress with this polka dot pattern, which is small and rounded, so contrasts with her dramatic frame, but has a square neckline, the dress is elongated, all of the silhouettes are straight and geometric. And follow this last dress, you can see that the silhouette, of course, works for dramatic, it's got that sharp neckline, the edges are straight, but also the pattern is geometric. It's got a little bit of iridescence and color, which makes it really fun, but at the end of the day, everything in here works for her dramatic body type without having to change anything. Soft dramatics, we're looking at Barbara Streisand, and soft dramatics dominant features are vertical and curved, which means that they are elongated and they have an angular bone structure, but they are also rounded. So for refine, we're wanting those details to be made 
more large and round like Barbra Streisand's frame. One of the examples of this is this outfit where she is in this little 60s little outfit. Collars were a big thing in the 60s, which was just in general a time where the sun route was quite trendy, I would say, and collars were a big part of that. So rather than choosing a little and sharp collar, she's chosen one which is large and rounded so that it doesn't contradict so much with her bone structure. Focus, I love this outfit where she's wearing this gingham print, which is obviously very sharp and geometric, so contradicts with the roundness in her frame, but she's got very subtle waist emphasis and the layering as well as so 60s. And the hat also has that same geometric pattern, but the actual shape is quite round, soft, and even quite large. And lastly, when it comes to follow, there's this just completely iconic Barbra Streisand outfit, which I've seen a lot on Pinterest. You can see that it uses this fur, which is large and soft, but it's outside of the realms of what you would wear in your day-to-day -day outfit, which makes it very sun, even though it works for her body type and doesn't look that much of a statement against her frame, we know that it's still sun. For Flamboyant Naturals, we're looking at Tracy Ellis Ross, whose dominant features are width and vertical. So we're looking for accessories which are kind of blunt, large, and elongated. For example, let's look at these sunglasses. You could just pick a normal type of sunglasses, but instead she's got frames which are very thick, which honor that yang bone structure, the glasses are larger, and even in one of the pictures they are rectangular or even squarish, which honors the bluntness in her frame. For focus, I think this outfit is great with, she's wearing this red dress and she's got this, I don't really know what to call it, but this layering piece which can be quite restrictive on a flamboyant natural to have this kind of layering. But the fabric is leather, which is quite a chunky, heavy fabric, which honors her yang dominant bluntness. And follow, one of the things she does is she leans into the oversized part of sunroots. So we're looking for where her roots and her body type intersect. We're looking for things which are both, basically. Like if we're looking at a Venn diagram, follow is the bits in the middle. For example, she wears this really oversized hat, which oversized shapes in general and flamboyant naturals look quite elegant and chic. So she's just taken that to the max and really just leaned into that so that we know it's a ridiculous sized hat because it has no practicality whatsoever, but it doesn't contradict that much with her body type. Soft Naturals, we're looking at Katy Perry, and Soft Naturals' dominant features are width and curve. So Soft Naturals are a little bit smaller than Flamboyant Naturals as well. So Refine, we're looking for details which are not usually wide and round, but have been made wide and round for the outfit purpose. And Katy Perry does this in a way you just wouldn't expect, and that's this outfit with the cans. So cans are typically elongated and narrow, whereas she's taking kind of the ends as like these accessories, which are kind of wide around and therefore honor the shapes in her frame. Focus, I think this dress with this geometric pattern works really well. The pattern is wide, so it kind of works for her frame, but the vertical stripe doesn't so much. But you see that the actual shape of the dress comes in at the waist, it has some width in the skirt, it has those large round patterns on the bottom. So the silhouette itself is very, has that width and curve that we're looking for. And for follow, I think this maternity look with this large bow works perfectly for this. So you can see how she's leaned, similarly to Tracy Ellis Ross, she's leaned into the oversized element of the sunroof to make it look bold and playful, but it's still wide and round, so it doesn't contradict so much with her frame. So dramatic classics, let's look at Olivia Munn. Dramatic classics dominant features are balance and vertical. So we're looking for pieces which are moderate, quite simple, and also with a little bit of sharpness. Now for classics, they only need one or two details to start looking quirky and like they're having fun with the outfits starting to look a little bit avant-garde. So too much and it's gonna be quite overwhelming for a classic. So refine, this sparkle would typically be a very yin detail and would contradict with a dramatic classic, but you can see that the sparkle is quite matte for a sparkle, if that makes sense. It's not too overpowering. The sequin sparkle element is also very tight, so it's not, um, the sparkles create this kind of matte fabric effect because they're so close together. And it's kept it very sharp. So the actual sequin itself being this fun element has been made dulled down a little bit so that it doesn't overpower her. Now for focus, this dress is really, really great. You can see that it's got these adornments which are very sun, they're very colorful. There's a lot of detail going on. They're also very round and soft, which also contrasts with her frame. But the actual silhouette of the dress has that very 
softly sharp neckline, very, very delicately soft, very subtly, I think is what I'm looking for, subtly sharp in the neckline there. Um, the straight edges of the dress, there's not too much emphasis on curve, which she doesn't need. The sharp slit honors that yang undercurrent. So the actual shape of the dress works great for her body type, even though the adornments can slightly overwhelm her. And follow, I think that this skirt works really, really well. It's a white skirt and it's got this geometric pattern, so it instantly honors her sharpness, but also it's not too high contrast because the whole skirt is white. And I think if you're a classic type trying to have a little bit of fun with patterns, this is a really great way to do that because the contrast is very low. Soft Classic Danae Benton. Soft Classic's dominant features are balance and curve. So we're looking for things which are moderate with a little bit of softness. So firstly, let's look at this dress that she wore to the Tony as our refine example. So you can see that the leaves here would typically contrast with her softer bone structure as they are quite sharp and elongated, but they've made them a more moderate size and also softened the edges a little bit. So it doesn't look like quite such a harsh line and it blends more softly into the skirt. And also the pattern is kept away from her face. It's kept in the skirt so that it doesn't overwhelm her features. For focus, you can see that she's wearing this gingham print, which contradicts both her balance and her curve. Um, but the actual silhouette of the dress is very rounded, like that slightly round neckline. We have waist emphasis. We have a moderate length skirt. The only thing that in this outfit which doesn't work for her body type is that very chunky, heavy belt, which is the first thing that your eye is drawn to in this outfit and does overwhelm her slightly. For follow, we have this great polka dot dress. Obviously, a pattern is a little bit overwhelming for a classic in general, but in this instance, the pattern is of a moderate sized and it's rounded, so it works a little bit better. So, flamboyant gamines, something that I don't mention, or I haven't got in my notes, but I think it's worth mentioning, is that obviously flamboyant gamines and gamines in general look best in contrast and they look their most elegant and timeless in contrast. So they're not gonna look that bold when they're wearing patterns and things. It's gonna look very normal. So actually to make a statement as a flamboyant gamine, you might wanna try just wearing something really, really plain and simple, and it might look more bold and avant-garde than you might expect. So refine, typically ruffles um, on a neckline would be very soft and delicate. Whereas on Zoe here, the ruffle has made, been made a little bit more like fringe. So it comes off very sharp and elongated. So this honors the contrast in her frame because it's very sharp and little, but it's also kind of got that yang influence in there as well. It's really clever. And the pleats in the skirt also are very sharp, elongated straight to honor the sharpness in her frame. For focus here, Zoe's wearing like this kind of baby doll dress, which is kind of too yin for her. It's too little, soft and rounded and very romantic. So it could kind of overwhelm her a little bit. But what we've done is the shape of the dress is short. So still on as the petite in her frame and also the edges are quite elongated. And also if you are a sharp type, you can see that this dress has an empire waist. They can be amazing for sharp types because it keeps that elongation in the kind of second half of, of your body, keeping everything kind of sharp there. I think that they work great for sharper types. And lastly, follow. Now this is where gamines can just go absolutely to the max because they're looking for details which are contrasted, which worked amazingly for the sun style route. But what they're gonna need to do is just like go completely overboard. So where for another type, wearing polka dots in the skirt can look quite fun and playful. It's just gonna look very chic and elegant on a flamboyant gamine and a gamine in general. So you wanna have like this outfit that Zoe Deschanel wears, where she's got one print on the top, and I think she's got one, two, three different prints going on in the skirt, or three different patterns going on in the skirt. She's got a headband on, gloves. So there's so many details going on, and I would say it's only the gloves, really, which start to look overpowering on this outfit. Otherwise, it looks fairly regular. <laughs> um, whereas on me, that would look like a lot of detail and it would quite overwhelm me because I'm a soft classic, whereas it looks kind of chic on her. But the point is basically just lean into that, lean into it completely. Soft gamines, Cindy Lauper, very much known for her bold, crazy outfits. So soft gamines dominant features are petite, vertical contrast plus curve. So they have that little delicate sharp bone structure, but they have curve layered on top of that. So for refine, let's look at this outfit here. Again, we're talking about collars. So unlike um, Barbara Streisand, whose collar was made large and rounded, for Cindy Lauper here, it's rounded and little. So you can see how, because she has that little rounded bone structure, that's a much better shout. Um, and also, 
I would just say, look at the amount of detail that's going on in this outfit. That's pretty much how much you need as a swap gamine. So focus, if we look at this plaid skirt, plaid is obviously a geometric pattern. Works for her contrast, but it is a little bit geometric and sharp for her. Whereas the rest of the outfit, it's got that round neckline, which honors the round shapes in her frame. She has some waist emphasis, which creates a lot of contrast. So the plaid um, looks very effortless there. And follow, again, just take it to the max. I mean, in this outfit here, Cindy Lauper is wearing a little boxy jacket, which honors her petite vertical contrast, but it's also rounded here. So it honors the curve in her frame. Um, she's got a lot of contrast going on. I mean, yeah, just absolutely take it to the max and lean into that. Theatrical Romantic, I'm looking at Rihanna and I do have a caveat for this. Kibi believes that Rihanna is under five foot eight. He believes that she's under five foot five. I don't. I don't think that she's a theatrical romantic. She's the only celebrity which I am willing to battle David on. <laughs> I just, there are pics of her standing next to Taylor Swift and she's almost the same height. Like I just, I don't, I think she's probably a soft dramatic. But if we put that aside and assume that she actually is a theatrical romantic, Let's look at how she honors her double curve and petite and vertical influence. So refine. If we look at this jacket in this outfit, um, this is a very theatrical romantic outfit actually. Everything's very petite and contrasted. Zebra pints are often very large and elongated, whereas here they're quite blended and quite soft and rounded. So it's echoing the round shapes in her frame. I love this little stripy blouse here you can see that the pattern well it's very similar to this one the pattern is geometric because obviously it's a very little sharp pattern um but the neckline has been kept very rounded so the silhouette itself is soft and rounded and again the soft and rounded sleeves as well so you barely even notice that it's a sharp pattern and for follow rihanna does this a lot one of the ways i love that she does it is she leans into furs she wears a lot of furs which are large so they honor that yang undercurrent that she has but they're also very soft and rounded and they look quite bold against her smaller frame and lastly romantic let's look at dolly parton who has whose dominant features are double curve and petite so again we're coming back to collars here i've talked about collars a lot i just think they're a great example you can see here how the collar itself hasn't been adjusted for her frame but through the pattern, it's kind of been elongated so that we don't notice that it's a high and sharp collar and it just blends very softly into that rounded kind of neckline um, so that it honors the round shapes in her frame. Focus, I love this little um, cropped jacket of Dolly's. The fringe is quite elongated and sharp, so it doesn't honor her body type very well, but you can see that the silhouette, the jacket comes in very tightly at the waist, so it echoes the hourglass in her frame. And follow, Dolly does this all the time. A very iconic Dolly look is her in this little blouse, which is tied at the waist. Um, she's got this little round polka dot pattern. She has that round headscarf. So everything here looks quite sun and fun and playful, but um, it's also very round, little and delicate like her. Thank you, I hope you've learned something about the sun style route and dressing more quirky for your body type without overwhelming you. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you will enjoy my playlist on body types. Um, thank you so much for watching. And, and if you want me to create a style file for you based on your style roots and body type, make sure to go to bodyandstyle.com. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.